and uh, it is an honor to be here, and uh, I give honor to you today. Amen. This house is full of people that love Jesus. Why else would you come out on a Sunday morning? Amen. But because you love Jesus and you want to know him more. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. If you'll turn with me in your Bible to uh, the book of Mark, <clears throat> and as you're turning, I give honor to your pastor and his family. It's so good to be here. Thank you very much for the invitation. Amen. And I'm excited about what God has in store today. He has confirmed his word uh, multiple times throughout the worship. And uh, I trust that what he has to say to us today will touch hearts and minds. We just have to be open to it. Amen. And uh, I'm so glad to be here and uh, with Megan and Stephen as well. I'm not sure where Stephen went to, but uh, she is a, a family friend, uh, mostly of my wife, childhood friend of my wife. And uh, I'm just kind of uh, grafted in, as they say, I guess. So uh, I married an Ohio girl, and that's what brought me here. Been married about four years. I regret that she wasn't able to be here, but I do give honor to my wife today. And, um, and also to my good friend, Brother Michael Croson. Glad that he could come with me today. And uh, so glad that he can worship a man with us today. I also give honor to my pastor, Brother Aaron Bounds in Zanesville. Ohio, a wonderful man of God, and uh, I stand in, in his authority today, amen, and, uh, and I'm just so thankful for that, for the order, amen, God is a God of order, and we have to be in order, amen, praise God, so Mark chapter 4, amen, and again, I'm just so excited to be here, Mark chapter 4, starting in verse 35, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is in this house. Whatever you have need of today, he's already been working. Amen. Just as we sang, uh, even if we don't see it, even if we don't feel it, but I'll tell you what, we feel it today, don't we? Hallelujah. He's going to do a work. He's doing a work. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Mark chapter 4, verse 35 says, And the same day... When the even was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship, and there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. Verse 38 says, And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow, and they awake him. And say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased and there arose, or and there, excuse me, there was a great calm. Verse 40, and he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? And going on into the next chapter, just a couple of verses out of chapter 5. And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit. Moving down to verse 6. And when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshiped him. Amen. If you'll put your Bibles down. And one more time, let's go to the Lord. God, I thank you, Jesus, for being in this place. Lord, I pray, Jesus, that you will be with us, Lord, as your word goes forth. Lord, speak through me, Jesus, as your servant, I pray and I ask. God, in the name of Jesus, your word is anointed, but anoint my lips. God, help us not to leave this place the same as we came, but to be changed by your power and by your anointing. In the name of Jesus Christ, do a work today. Oh, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we release right now the work of miracles, signs, and wonders in this place. Lord, I release faith in this place right now in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise God, praise God. My Lord, I feel the Spirit in this place today. And as you're seated, if you could just give him one more hand clap of praise. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen, amen. Thank you, brother. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, before I get into the message, just a, a little bit about me so you get to know me. Sometimes I feel like when we, when, when we have a guest speaker, you're wondering about who they are and where they came from, and, and sometimes that gets us distracted. So while you guys are getting set in your seats, I'll just tell you a little bit about me. As you already know, my name's Luke Vanderhoff. I married a wonderful young lady named Allison, and we live in Zanesville, Ohio. I'm 30 years old. I'm an electrician by trade, and so I like to say that I bring the power. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. But uh, the Lord has blessed us, and we're so excited for what God is doing in this end time revival. Amen. And as your pastor has already said, we are a part of something so much greater than ourselves. Amen. There are people all over the world that believe as you believe, that love the same God that you love. Amen. And we've talked about the power that was at camp. Well, that same God that was at camp is in this place today. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For those that are a little bit younger, how many are six years old in the place? Is there anybody that's six years old? Maybe seven years. We got a six-year-old over there, maybe seven or eight. All right. Well, guess what? I received the gift of the Holy Ghost when I was six years old. So not much younger than some of you and at the same age as some of you. And I have friends that received the Holy Ghost as young as four years old. So let me tell you, today it is for you and for your children. Amen. It doesn't matter your age or your background or your pedigree. My God loves you and he wants to do a work in your life. Amen, amen, praise God, praise God, praise God. Well, I have a question for you today. I was wondering, I'm wondering who wants to be a millionaire in the house? Amen, I loved that prayer that you prayed for your offering. That's, that's a, that is a, 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 a godly thing to do, a biblical thing to do, amen? We're the head and not the tail, amen? We're gonna be blessed coming in and going out, hallelujah. Praise God. My Lord, the Spirit of God is here. Woo, I feel him. Amen. So if you want to be a millionaire today, I have good news for you. There is somewhere that there is a book written or maybe there's an online video that you can watch that in 15 minutes they'll share their secret on how to become a millionaire. Amen. Somebody out there, and that's probably how they became a millionaire. Don't tell anyone, but it's because of those subscriptions, right? You've heard of that kind of thing. Maybe you've seen an ad somewhere, uh, or maybe, maybe you want you know, not to be too, too weird here, Pastor, but maybe you just want a rocking body. Is anybody, you know, you're hitting the gym every day. You want to look real good. You ever seen that guy that he comes on, he's in a tank top, and he's, he's probably curling or something like that. He says, hey, you're doing it all wrong. Forget that diet stuff. You just need to watch my video. Just click through and subscribe to my website, and I'm going to give you a secret on how to become, uh, you know, just somebody that can pump iron and, and can look great and be healthy and you don't even have to change anything you're doing. Just take this formula that I found in my, you know, backyard garage or something. It's like, you know, what's the first thing that comes to mind when you see that kind of thing or this, what is it? Fraud. That's right. Fraud or scam, right? It's a scam. They're out to get me, you know, but people pay for that stuff, man. They want to get into it. And uh, they, they look for that. There's, there's things like seven-minute abs and uh, millionaire fast lane books. And all these are, are produced to get you in the mindset that you don't have to change anything you're doing. You don't have to. But you can, uh, you can just you can become like those people, right? I, it, you know, it reminds me of a lesson that I learned when I was young. And uh, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. That's right. It probably is. Well, I'm going to preach to us today for just a few minutes. It's not too good to be true. See, those things out there, we, we, we look at those as scams. We think about that. And, and like I say, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. But as we look into this text today, we, we, we might question, okay, what's going on? He talks about going into this ship and passing over to the other side. We pick up this story after Jesus 
has been teaching in parables. The scripture says that he taught in parables and he didn't teach in anything but parables. And then when he got with his disciples, he would uh, share with them what was going on. And, and so we find this is happening and, and he would, uh, the, the, the scripture says that he expounded all things to his disciples. See, the Bible tells us that the Holy Ghost, which is our comforter, is sent to us to teach us all things. It's not just so that we can feel his presence on Sunday, but on Monday when you're in the Word of God or when you're working through a situation at work or whatever, the Spirit will be there to help you. He is our helper and our teacher. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's what we see God was doing here. God robed in flesh in, in Jesus Christ. He is expounding things to his disciples. I'll tell you today, I want to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I want the word to be expounded to me. And so that's what's going on. And so he says, let's pass over into the other side. Well, Jesus has been teaching a while. And as we know, he was fully God, but he was also fully man. So he got tired. And he, he, he decides to go and take a nap, as it were. He, he goes into the, the, the hinder part of the ship, as the word says. And he lays his head on a pillow and falls asleep. But what happens is a storm comes. So often we might think that this would be, you know, what we might experience in Ohio in the summer, thunder and wind and lightning. But we find that the word tells us it was only a windstorm, only a windstorm. I wonder how often that we might get distracted by something that is only wind in our lives. We deal with situations and, 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 and things that come upon us and come against us, but really it's only wind. It's just a distraction. And I'll tell Tell you today that if you find yourself in the storm, I know the peace speaker, hallelujah, and he's in this place today. He's here to help and speak peace to your storm. So I tell you, you have hope today because he is here and he will speak to your storm, hallelujah. He will deliver you from that storm. The creator of the wind and the waves and the sea was there robed in flesh and he spoke peace today and he's given us the spirit of peace in this place place hallelujah so if you need peace he is the peace speaker hallelujah 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 but brother roberts when they got to the other side it seemed that all of what was going on in their storm was made clear unto them there was a man on the other side. See, again, that wind is sent to our distraction. But what we don't realize is the storm is not about us. No, the storm is about the man on the other side. Maybe that storm is sent to prepare us for that person at work or that person across the street that's going through something. See, that wind was pushing that boat all the faster because there was a man bound by demons on the other side. You don't know who your neighbor is. You don't know who you're working next to or what the situation is that someone's going through. That storm may not be about you, but about that man on the other side that needs deliverance today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that's where we find ourselves in Mark chapter 5 is this man who, who, who immediately, the scripture says, met Jesus there. But this man, he was crazed. He was out of his mind, the scripture says, and tells us that he was, that he would run around naked amongst the tombs and the mountains, and that he had been bound often by fetters and chains. See, the people in that time, all that they had for his answer was not deliverance, but was chains. It was just bondage. It was just more fetters and chains. The scripture says that he was bound often with fetters and chains but continued to break them and no matter how many times he broke them the people would gather more chains around him they would bind him again and again maybe you find yourself there today there was never a question of what caused his demonic de possession there was never a concern for him his friends and neighbors just wanted him out of their life. They just wanted to get rid of the, the problem. They just wanted to push it aside. There was no help for him except more chains. We don't know what might have happened to him. Maybe it was physical.
physical abuse, maybe a sexual abuse that had bound him up, that had opened him up to the demons. Maybe it was loneliness or abandonment, maybe depression. Maybe it was the feelings of worthlessness and fear and inadequacy. But all that the world wanted to give him was more bondage, more chains. Drown your sorrow in this bottle. Take this drug. It will help you forget about what the past has brought to you. Maybe you need medication for that depression. Maybe you need just more bondage and more chains. In Galatians chapter 5, we see the things that happened to this man. It was nothing but the works of the flesh. The scripture tells us now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and the such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past. And they that which do these things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. See, that's what the world wants to bring you, is nothing but the works of the flesh. It's nothing but the chains of envy, nothing but the chains of murders, nothing but the chains of lasciviousness. It's nothing but bondage that binds you and continues to affect you and continues to work in you. And all that they want to bring you is their answers of more bondage and more chains. Maybe if you hit the jackpot, you'll win big and can have enough money to buy your way out. Maybe if you sleep with enough people, you'll find this the person that will make you forget the one that hurt you. I don't know where you are today, but that's all that the world has to offer you. Others will try to manipulate with you with things that are not real. I've heard ads for a hypnosis to try to help you out of, uh, of nicotine addiction. All that is is something that will not last. It's something that is fake, something that is brought on by the, the, the thought process of the world. See, the scripture tells us that our wisdom is not truly wisdom. The scripture tells us that our abilities are not true compared to the wisdom of God. All it is is more chains, more bondage. Hallelujah. 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 What we must do today is instead of those chains that we find in the world, we must turn to Jesus. See, Jesus is the only answer to free you from the things binding you, from the troubles that you found yourself in, from the past that you can't seem to erase, no matter what you put in your body, or no matter who you try to be with or be connected to. All of those memories continue to come back, just as this man might have dealt with. He finds himself just running wild in the tombs and the mountains, bound by this thing called called Legion. Jesus asked him, what is your name? He was speaking to the spirits. See, that name today might be alcoholism, or it might be a drug addiction, or it might be a gang that has you tied up. Whatever it might be, I don't know where you are today, but I do know that there is a God that loves you, and I do know that that Jesus, the same Jesus that was alive and well then, is alive and well today, and wants to free you today. Hallelujah. See, Jesus is our answer to free us. Just as we find the man of Gadara, he, he immediately runs to Jesus. There was no bondage. There was no demon possession that could keep him from him. And he falls to his feet and worships him. And Jesus' answer, if you'll help me, brother, here. Jesus' answer is to remove the things of the world, to remove that bondage. He gets rid of it. And what we find just a few verses later is that man is freed, he's clothed, and he's in his right mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
That's who's here today. He's the one to free you. He's the one to release you. I don't care how long it's been that you've been bound. I don't care how many things have bound you. His name is all powerful. His spirit is all powerful. Hallelujah. He was the one that was wounded for our transgression. He was the one that was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. He understands where you are, hallelujah. He understands what you've been through, hallelujah. Think about the bruises, the internal things, the things that bind us that no one else can see. We come on a Sunday morning on an outpouring service after a powerful time at camp, but still that mask is upon us. That thing that we're hiding, whatever it might be, whatever we're putting up beside us and aside us, behind us, the things that we don't want anybody else to know about, that's the bruises that are inside. But my God was bruised for our iniquity. He understands where you are today and all that he offers. It's not chains. It's not chains that he offers. It's not chains. No, it's freedom. He was bruised for our iniquity. He was the chastisement of our peace was upon him so that he can offer you freedom today. Hallelujah. Let's just love him right now. Praise God. Praise God. See, Galatians 5 doesn't end with the the works of the flesh, but no, it goes on to the fruit of the Spirit. And that's what Jesus will offer you today. He gives you love and joy and peace. He gives you long-suffering and gentleness and goodness and faith. He gives you meekness and temperance because against such there is no law. Against such there are no chains that will bind you. Against such, and I'm telling you today, it's not too good to be true. This isn't a scam this isn't something that you can that is fake no this is real hallelujah this is real hallelujah 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 this man bound by tormenting spirits was drawn to Jesus. Others he would scare away. He seemed crazy. I can imagine the stories that, that the parents would tell their children about the man. Don't, don't go play out by the sea. Don't go play among the tombs. There's that crazy man, that wild man that's out there. Don't get close to him. Don't love him. Don't care for him. We don't know what his problem is. We just want to get rid of it. We just want to put it aside from us. I don't know what you've been experiencing in your life maybe you have experienced that abandonment maybe you've been forgotten and left and you feel like nobody loves you but Jesus loves you today Jesus loves you today hallelujah Hallelujah. I want to tell you something that the devil doesn't want you to know. That Satan, your enemy, doesn't want you to know. See, this man who was bound by all of this, who had a legion of demons, the Bible tells us, he ran and fell to Jesus' feet. As soon as Jesus touched the shore of that sea, he ran and fell. See, there's nothing that can keep you from Jesus today. The Bible tells us that the devils also believe and tremble. The things that you're dealing with... The things that are that are tormenting you day by day, that you can't sleep at night because they're on your mind, that you don't know how to deal with every day, the things that are that you're struggling with. See, those things, they also believe in God and they tremble. They tremble, they tremble, they tremble that your ears would be open to what I'm saying right now. They tremble that your ears would be open to pastor's counseling. They tremble that your eyes would see the the the, the possession that they have, the bond that they have on you those things tremble today but you don't have to be afraid you don't have to be afraid because he's not giving us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind hallelujah you can have a sound mind today Oh, right now, I come against the spirits of depression and anxiety in this place. I come against the spirits of fear in the name of Jesus Christ. 
I come against the spirits of deception in this place right now. In the name of Jesus, I cast you out. You have no place here, devil. Hallelujah. I come against the spirits of infirmity right now in this place. I lose healing in this place right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord. Let's give him another praise right now. Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we magnify you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, the people, they came out from the town. There were people there. They saw it. I can imagine now they send a messenger. Go get everybody. You don't know what's going on right now. This, that crazy man, you know, the guy that's been living out there for who knows how long. You know, the guy that we just tried to get rid of. He, something's happening. You got to go get everybody. This has got to be too good to be true. There's no way that guy could be delivered. There's no way that guy could be freed. There's no way. We've tried to bind him. He's broken the chains over and over again. We just keep giving him to him. I don't know what to do. This guy, all he did was talk to him. What's going on? They come out. They believe in it. It's, it's just, it's got to be too good to be true. But then... They see what Jesus did, and they find the man seated and clothed in his right mind. It's not too good to be true today. It's not too good to be true today. Maybe you don't believe me. Maybe you say, you know, hey, that's an awesome story, and, and I know I come to church regularly, and I'm faithful, and, but I just don't know about all that stuff. Well, let me have 14-year-old Ben who's alive right now in Zanesville, answer that. See, during COVID, Ben and his mom, Lisa, began watching the anchor services online. In September of 2020, Ben was checked for a genetic heart disorder known as Brugada syndrome. He was having irregular heartbeats, so his parents took him to Children's uh, Hospital. And after this EKG, the staff said, do not let that child leave. After about four more K, uh, EKGs and other tests, they had been there several hours, OSU cardiology confirmed that the irregular patterns in Ben's heart were this genetic disorder. In January of 2021, Lisa decided that she wanted to get Ben a Bible. He had begun praying in his room and they were still watching services online. And so reaching out to a family member in the church for recommendations, they got a Search for Truth Bible and started doing Bible studies on January 16 of 21. As a result of the Bible studies, Ben was baptized on February 27, 21. Hallelujah. And on April 11, Ben received the gift of the Holy Ghost, but he was still wearing his heart monitor. We had an old-fashioned prayer line one night at church and brother, uh, there were some ministers there and there was a declaration that uh, God was going to heal Ben's heart. And so uh, the family member, her name is Christy, she uh, went up to Ben and she said, do you want to go through the prayer line for your heart? And he said, sure. And so she uh, said, all right, let's ask your mom. So they go to Lisa and they say, uh, we're going to take Ben through the prayer line for his heart. Is that okay? And she says, yes. And something stirred Christy, and she said, do you want to go with us? And so she said, yes. So then the, the father, Ken, was, was standing there, and, and he says, what, what are you guys doing? And, and she says, we're going to go through the prayer line for Ben, for his heart. Is that okay? And he says, yes. And so she says, do you want to go with us? And he says, yes. And so all four or five of them, four of them walk down and go through this prayer line. About a week later, Ben went to Children's Hospital and had another EKG. This EKG, however, came back normal. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. 
struggling with belief, the doctor did further genetic testing to be certain that Ben was all clear, and all the tests came back normal. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. But that's not the end of the story. Just July 13th, 2022, God continued the work by Lisa, his mother, getting baptized. Amen. Hallelujah. And he's still doing the work in their family. Hallelujah. See, that God, the same God that delivered that man of Gadara, of his diseases and his troubles and his problems, is alive and working today in Zanesville. And he's alive and working today in Cleveland. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Maybe you still think it's just too good to be true. Well, let me tell you about Carolyn, a woman in her 60s. She had also had gone through numerous issues throughout her life. I don't even know every detail. I, it would probably shock many of us. It got so bad that she decided to go to a bridge one day and, and, and try to take her life. In that, in that uh, 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 trying to take her life, she did not succeed and she injured herself and I'll tell you what today I come against the spirit of suicide right now hallelujah that is alive and well today and I speak peace to those people hallelujah my God is greater than that spirit hallelujah I know you may be hurting today I know you may be struggling today but I'll tell you what just hold on have faith in Jesus he will help you He will help you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Someone invites Carolyn to church. It's been several years. She's been living with this injury. She's been living with these things in her mind still. She comes to church on a Wednesday night. She's sitting on the pew. Worship is going on. No one touches her. Nobody gets close to her. Nobody even knows what her situation is except perhaps one or two closer people there to her in the church. During worship, her left leg, which had been damaged and injured in this attempt to suicide, it was, it was full it up and shorter than the right leg it's straightened during worship and she is walking just fine today hallelujah and still comes to church regularly praise God praise God it's not too good to be true today praise God hallelujah Hallelujah. Maybe you still don't believe me. Well, let me tell you about my grandmother, who I affectionately called Nana. She was diagnosed with uterine cancer. Following tests, they found a tumor, and so surgery was scheduled for a Thursday. On Wednesday night, there was a prayer line. The next day, she went into surgery. Shortly thereafter, the doctors came out. My grandfather, being concerned, began to inquire, what's wrong? What's going on? Why are you, why are you out so quick? You, you said the surgery would be longer. The doctor just begins to shake his head. He said, before we began surgery, we decided to go ahead and do some more tests just to be sure. So he goes in and he said, all we can see is the imprint of a grapefruit-sized tumor on her uterus. She's completely and totally healed. My grandmother, bless her heart, hallelujah, lived to be 90 years old until she passed away of old age. My God is a healer today. My God is a healer today. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Praise God if we could stand in the presence of the Lord today. Hallelujah! 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 As the lyrics of the song go, we've seen cancer disappear. We've seen broken bodies healed. Don't tell me he can't do it. We've seen real life resurrection. We've seen mental health restored. Don't you tell me he can't do it today. We've seen families reunited. We've seen prodigals return. Don't tell me he can't do it today. Hallelujah! We've seen troubled souls delivered. We've seen addicts finally freed. Don't don't tell me he can't do it. Hallelujah. We will see this city in revival. Salvation will flood these streets. Hallelujah. Don't tell me he can't do it. Don't tell me he can't do it. Don't tell me he can't do it. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. My Lord, have mercy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is this all right, brother? Praise God, praise God, praise God. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. It's not too good to be true today. It's not too good to be true today. Hallelujah. It's not too good to be true today. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I wonder if we could just close our eyes right now and focus on Jesus. Praise God. Do you believe He can do it today? Yes. Hallelujah. I know in a room this size with this many people, somebody needs a deliverance today. Whether it's a physical healing, a mental healing, whatever it might be, maybe you need salvation, you need your family touched. I don't know. Pastor and I didn't talk. I don't know what's, what's going on in this place. But I know that we need Jesus. When we are weak, He is strong. Hallelujah. That's how it's supposed to be.